Our first reading today is from the prophet Malachi, and the psalm is Psalm 131, which is um, uh, humility. The theme of this whole liturgy is humility on the part of the leaders. Humility in serving God and submitting to Him, and humility in serving the brethren. And all the texts treat of this. So, uh, the preachers can preach whatever they want, but they better include the indictment of themselves, because that's part of what we're going to have to do this week on this 31st Sunday. So the text begins, Melech Kadol Ani, a great king am I, says the Lord of hosts. This is Malachi. And my name will be feared among the nations. And now, O prince, O priests, this commandment is for you. If you do not listen, if you do not lay it to heart, to give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts, I will send a curse upon you. And of your blessing I will make a curse. You have turned aside from the way and have caused many to falter by your instruction. You see, if you're not praying, laying down your life before God, your mind gets mixed up. And then you're uh, giving people wrong advice. Uh, somebody once said, priests sometimes think they have to be nicer than Jesus. You see, Jesus says that fornication is wrong, but it's all right. You see, uh, Jesus says homosexuality is wrong, but it's really okay. In other words, I'm nicer than Jesus. I would to God I was anywhere near him. But this is, see, the priest asserts to himself uh, something which is not his to ever possess. And this is already the case in the Old Covenant, and that's why he's saying this, you see. You have turned aside from the way, and having gotten yourself mixed up, that's not the text, that's me, have caused many to falter by your instruction. You have made void the covenant of Levi, which is this covenant that God made with the house of Levi, says the Lord of hosts. I therefore have made you contemptible and base before all the people. You hear that? You see? If we're not upright, prayerful, courageous, and kind, then we go off the rails. And all the people see it. And they're disappointed. They're heartbroken. They're discouraged. You know, we got bishops in jail. We got, you know, why? You see? I therefore have made you contemptible and base before all the people, since you do not keep my ways, but show partiality in your decisions. Have we not all the one Father? Has not the one God created us? Why then do we break faith with one another, violating the covenant of our fathers, you see? Um, and so this is the... Um, the indictment from the prophecy of Malachi, one of the latest books of the Old Covenant. What it's saying simply and directly is, you see, if you are given a position of authority among God's people, your only hope for survival is total obedience to God. You don't have any other hope. You can tailor your message so that you're really popular, but you will hear from the Lord about that. And the danger is that you will lead people astray and you will have to answer for them. Uh, and so, as all the great priests have always said, I tremble at the responsibility. It's a huge responsibility. And so, uh, it doesn't give me access to a nicer vacation or a better car or people being nice to me and inviting me to the country club. Nothing wrong with the country club. It gives me the capacity to lead and teach God's people if I am willing to be led and taught by the Lord. 
And so this is quite an indictment, as you can see. Uh, it, it's uh, this text. Uh, now, the psalm, interestingly enough, is a beautiful psalm. You see? It's, it's a meditation on the reading and pointing out to us the way out. How, I mean, oh my gosh, what have I got myself in for, you know? Uh, I simply cannot use my position as a priest to have people do favors for me. You know, yes, Father, no, Father. I have to be a servant. But I serve with the truth or I'm no servant at all. Now, listen to this psalm. You know it all. Uh, it's uh, one of the songs of the ascent by, by uh, uh, attributed to David. Adonai lo gabalibi. My heart is not lifted up. You see? Uh, and my eyes are not haughty. And I have not gone after things that are great or marvels that are beyond me. I'm not looking, you know, for all that stuff. Uh, rather, I have stilled, and this is the image now, I have stilled and quieted my soul. Like a weaned child on its mother's lap, so is my soul within me. Now, what is a weaned child like on its mother's lap? An unweaned child who is being weaned is restless and angry and cranky and crying. He wants the breast. Finally, the mother holds him enough, you know, that he gets the idea that he, he's being cared for even when he's not being fed. He's weaned. He doesn't need consolation every split second. Because that whole relationship has gone up a level. And now it's just in holding the child. And so my soul is like that. I don't need an apocalypse every day in prayer. You see, I don't, I've been weaned from that kind of excitement. It's enough for me that I know you love me. And that's enough. So you see, like a weaned ch child on his mother's lap, um, so is my soul within me. Now, can you see how this applies, this psalm, to the indictment of the priest, Old Testament or New? How do we get to be like a weaned child held by its mother, you see? We stop looking for fun and games. You see, the child, the only reason, put it this way, the child, when he's being held by his mother, next to her breasts, all he wants is to eat. She's a thing. She's the source of, of his food, his comfort. Now there's more going on. Obviously, even there, the child is still incapable of speech. But when finally the child gets the idea, I can be held and be at peace and satisfied even when I'm not eating, when I'm not feeding, then my soul, I'm not looking for big things. I'm not looking for things beyond me, you see. I've stilled and quieted my soul like a weaned child, you see. Uh, my eyes aren't haughty. I don't need to know the answer to all the questions. But I do have to be in union with you. Von Balthasar, <clears throat> talking about this, <clears throat> Von Balthasar, talking about this, uh, uses the example of the mother's smile. The mother's holding the child and smiling. And there's such love radiated through that smile that the human being knows that basically reality is all right. It's just been cast out of this nice, warm, comfy place in the womb. Now it's got to face reality but he's being held. And he sees that communication of the mother's smile. That happens, you know, in the first two or three days, the child can pick that up. And then, after a while, the child is weaned. So, you see, we can be weaned. 
I don't need an apocalypse every time I go to prayer. I don't even need consolation every time. I'm, oof, I'm so glad for it. But better than any consolation is you, Lord. And if you come and it's dark and I'm bored, hallelujah. Now this is very important because you see, when we say, all right, I'm going to start out on a life of prayer. And so you start and after a little while, it's kind of boring and dark and there doesn't seem to be much going on. You say, ah, I'm, prayer isn't part of my spirituality. If prayer isn't part of your spirituality, you don't have one. It's that simple. But you see, it's that the whole relationship is being raised to another level. And it's a characteristic of uh, people in our age. Huh? Mother Teresa was asked once, by a reporter, I think I've mentioned this before. Mother Teresa, what is it like to have deep experiences of God in prayer? And she answered, it has been so long, I have forgotten. Does that mean that she wasn't in touch with God? No. That little pilot light in the depth of her spirit was burning with such an intensity it could melt bridges. But she wasn't getting any emotional, or even any intellectual feedback from that. But it was there, and she knew it was there, and that was enough. I can be here in darkness, loving you, and my senses are bored, and I have all I can do to keep them there, going in the right direction, and not get um, uh, distracted. Why? Because my soul is now a weaned child. Can you see when that happens? That all these things that the Lord uh, indicts the priests about, you see, uh, don't happen. I don't need any big uh, whatever. I'm happy when the Lord comes, for heaven's sake. But so that the, the problem with the priests mentioned in the, in the text of Malachi is restlessness. I'm not satisfied. I've got to have more money, more vacations, more popularity, more something. And the Lord is saying, you don't. You've got me because I chose you. Now, if it's dark and tough to pray, stick at it. Do you know how many people all over the world are trying to pray and they're hooked to you? As you move forward, they move forward. And you'll hear from them throughout eternity. Oh, my name is Sam Lee. I lived in China. I was trying to find God if there was one. And, and now I see in heaven that you were the one pulling me along. It's part of our ministry. And so, in this first text, we have this idea that the secret of leadership is humility, which is not the same as doormat. And the way we learn it is from the Father. Because when we know the Father, we see how tenderness and truth are two sides of one reality. Uh, the Lord always, most of the time, speaks to us very tenderly. He's trying to wean us from fun and games and excitement and mystical experiences to just know Him. That's the secret of being humble as a leader. Amen.